Thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor. Um, well, first of all, thank you to the uh, other speakers for their uh, contributions um, today. Um, uh, I feel, <laughs> particularly you, Peter, yes. um, I feel um, particularly relieved to come from a country, of course, that uh, did not join the Euro, although I sometimes wake up in a cold sweat at night when I think of actually how close we came to joining the Euro. Um, if you look back, and some of my British colleagues are here now, to the political environment when the Euro was introduced in the late 1990s, early 2000s, it is amazing to think of the consensus of opinion that was in the UK all urging us to join. Um, we don't have much to be grateful to Gordon Brown for in the, in the UK, uh, but he did play one very vital role when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. He stopped Tony Blair from signing Britain up to the Euro because Blair was very, very keen for the UK to join and to, uh, to become uh, a part of it. I, I actually believe that if we had uh, joined, the thing would have collapsed completely by, by now because I think uh, the UK economy is so different and so divergent from the rest of Europe uh, and so relatively large um, that it would, have, uh, it, it would have caused the thing to, uh, to collapse completely. Um, the title of the session is uh, What is the Future of, uh, of, of the Euro? Uh, and I, I think the, the correct answer to that question at the moment is that nobody knows. Um, it won't stop us talking a great length about it, but I don't think we really do know what the outcome is going to be. And I think that it, that is the worrying thing about it. I don't think anybody in the ECB knows what the future is, and I certainly don't believe anybody in the, uh, in the higher echelons of government of, of Italy, France, Germany, etc., know what the future is as well. It's almost like rabbits. In, in the headland. They have no idea where to go. They, they, they can see what they want to accomplish, uh, how they want it to, to go, that uh, if, if, if it is to work, they have to move into a, a more integrated manner, to have debt mutualization, to, uh, to try and put in place a, a proper banking regime, to, uh, to have fiscal transfers, a Eurozone budget, etc., uh, etc. Et but of course, the political difficulties of bringing that about is massive, um, almost impossible. Uh, I, I would say that uh, these measures will prove totally unacceptable in many countries. And uh, I, I, I genuinely, firmly believe that uh, when the, the history of this period is written in, uh, in 30, 40, 50 years' time, uh, people will say that one of the biggest economic mistakes that was ever made in the history of Europe was the introduction of the euro. Um, I had the pleasure of being uh, a member of the European Parliament at the time when it was being uh, introduced, and I remember all the conversations that I had with uh, lots of bright, bushy, starry-eyed federalists at the time who genuinely were excited by the introduction. They thought this was the, the capstone of the, as the law said, of the federalist project. I remember discussing it with one of, the, uh, one of my uh, German CDU colleagues and uh, expressing the doubts that I had even at the time, saying I think this, is a, this is a really bad idea. So, no, 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 it would be great, it would be, it would be fantastic, and, and, and Europe will prosper because of it. Uh, and I said, but, you know, looking at the opinion polls, um, you know, because he said to me, surely the, yeah, the UK will join eventually, bound to, you know, it'll be such a success that you will be, uh, you'll be begging us to let you in. <laughs> yeah, that worked out well. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I said, yeah, but I mean, looking at the, uh, the opinion polls, I said, um, there's no way in a referendum that the UK will vote to join. I said, and even if, you, if there was a referendum in Germany now, you wouldn't join either. And he said, yeah, but we're not going to ask people whether they want to join or not. They don't know what's good for them. And, uh, and that is the arrogance of the, of the elites <laughs> when, it was, uh, when, it, when it was introduced. My, my party leader at the time, William Hague, described joining the Euro as being, walking into a burning building with no exits. And I think at the time he was widely criticized, but I think that was a very prescient statement when you look at the options now. Um, and there are no good choices for many of the countries that are, that are part of it. I'm not an admirer or supporter of, uh, of Yanis Varoufakis, the, the Greek, uh, late lamented Greek finance minister. Um, but he summed it up well in an interview on, on UK TV. Um, when uh, the interviewer asked him, well, should Greece leave the euro? Um, and he, he answered that question by saying, we should never have joined. Obviously, that's clear now, but leaving is really, really difficult because to leave a currency union such as, such as this, you are, in effect, advertising to the markets a devaluation 12 months in advance. 
um, there will be a massive, uh, massive flight of capital, of course, out of out of any country that, that's about to leave. There will be uh, there will be a, a crash in, in domestic markets as everybody pulls their money out and waits for the assets to become 10, 15, 20 percent cheaper in 12, uh, 12 months' time. Um, the, the correct way to do it, of course, would be to try and do it almost overnight without advertising the fact, but of course that's next to impossible in, uh, in, in, a, in a modern developed economy with, uh, with information sources and social media, et cetera, word would get out, even in, uh, in Cyprus when they, um, when, when they uh, took some money out of, the, out of people's bank accounts to, to help to, re to, to, to finance the banks. That was supposed to be done overnight, but I think the history of that is that many people knew all about it, and lots of people took the opportunity to take their money out and transfer it abroad uh, before this so-called secret announcement was uh, was released. And um, and even though, of course, we are, as I said, we are fortunate in the UK that we did not join it very much, we are uh, we are suffering from it. Um, I think if you look at, uh, at what happened in the UK Brexit rec referendum. A large part of that was down to the euro. First of all, because of course people can see that it uh, is not working out well, and it's a matter. Of, it's a fact of Euro European integration that uh, that is hardly uh, covering itself with glory. Secondly, people believe, rightly or wrongly, that there was a prospect of the UK having to contribute to the uh, to various uh, bailouts. And thirdly, of course, the immigration was by far the uh, the biggest issue in the referendum and an awful lot of, of immigration uh, from EU countries into the UK is caused by the collapse in, or the increase in unemployment in uh, domestic economies. People, are, if there is no work, people want to come to the more, uh, the more successful economies where there are jobs available. And so there was a large influx of uh, foreign labour from both Eurozone and non-Eurozone countries, and that contributed to people's unease about the European uh, project. Um, the other fundamental problem that I see in the euro and why I think the, the, the solutions to it are so difficult and so intractable is the simple matter of democracy. I was struck, and, and again, going back to the example of, of Greece, when we look at the last Greek uh, elections, when, um, or the election before last, when uh, the left-wing Syriza were elected, this was a marvellous election because uh, you had an election that was taking place and essentially there was no difference presented between the parties. Uh, ostensibly on the, on the surface there was, but the reality was it didn't matter who was elected, they were going to get the same economic policies, whatever happened. They had all been dictated to by, uh, by, by the German leader, by, um, by the European Central Bank, etc., uh, etc. Et so the economic policy was fixed and Syriza could stand for election and promise all these things would happen and all these things would change. And the reality was, of course, once they were elected, nothing could change because they had no power to influence it. And this, to me, is the fundamental flaw of the euro. You are removing the opportunity for domestic electorates to influence the economic policy of their nation. And I think that is profoundly dangerous. Um, I, I joked with the, with the socialists when the fiscal pact was first uh, introduced. Now, of course, we can see this being widely ignored, but when it was first introduced, I uh, had a joke with one of the socialists, and I said, but I don't know why you're voting for this, because it's making socialism illegal, effectively. I mean, I think socialism is, is a bad political creed. I think Keynesianism is bad. I'm a fiscal conservative, so I have no problem with the principle of sound money and low deficits, uh, etc. But I do believe that people have the right to vote for crazy policies if they want to. That's the essence of, uh, of democracy. And of course, uh, uh, and I said to Martin Schulz at the time, I said that this, this effectively is making socialism illegal. It's basically saying that you know, Keynesian, you know, if, if you believe in deficit financing, if you believe that uh, the answer to, uh, to, to an economic slump is to, is, is to spend your way out of it, which I don't, but if you did believe that, effectively you're removing that choice from the electorate. And that's where I believe that fundamentally, when, when the euro um, is dissolved, breaks up, is reformed, etc., it will be because in some countries, somewhere in Europe, somebody will get elected who sticks the proverbial two fingers up to, uh, up to Chancellor Merkel, up to the European Central Bank, and says, up with this, we will not put any more. We are no longer prepared to run our economy in a way dictated to by, by external forces. Uh, somebody somewhere, I don't know whether it nearly happened in Greece, it may happen in Portugal, it may happen in Italy, it may well happen in France, I don't know where it will happen, but somewhere in some Eurozone country it will happen and then we will see 
a proper crisis.